Before getting into network related data structures, I want to review some C features regarding data structures, specifically namespaces, structs, type defs, and unions. C has four namespaces. It has a namespace for objects, functions, type def names, and enum constants. It has a namespace for labels. It has a separate namespace for tags of structures, unions, and enumerations. And it has uh, uh, each structure or union individually has its own uh, a namespace of its own members. Here's an example where we create a function called kilo and we can still create a struct called named uh, a struct with a with a struct tag of kilo with the same name and that's because they are in different namespaces but if we try to create a type def uh, of named kilo that fails because the type def name is in the namespace as the function name which we already we already had here we create a struct without a type def so here's the struct tag alpha and we have our structure members and then we attempt to create a new variable IP using the uh, uh, using alpha as if it were a type but that fails because alpha is not a type it is just a struct tag here is the corrected example where we have the struct name we have the struct alpha and then we can create our variable IP using struct alpha as opposed to just alpha. And then we can assign values to its members, or we can go ahead and use a type def. And in this case, we type def struct alpha to beta. So beta is a struct, uh, a new type of struct alpha. And then we can use beta to initialize our variables. Here we have a struct with a struct tag of zeta, and then we use type def to make the type def name zeta identical to the struct name zeta. Some programmers think this is a good practice. Some programmers think it's poor practice to use the same name for two different, uh, 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 two different identifiers and two different namespaces. In any event, once we do that, then we can use our new type zeta to create a uh, variable of type z. Here we create a struct underscore gamma and when we're when we're declaring it we also uh, we also immediately type def it so gamma is a new type which is referring to a struct underscore gamma p gamma is also a type it's a pointer to a struct underscore gamma since we have our new type gamma we can immediately uh, uh, create a variable IP3 and of type gamma and then we can uh, uh, we can assign it value we can assign values in the struct and then we can create IP4 which is of type pointer to gamma however when we create IP4 it because it's a pointer to gamma we haven't actually created a gamma that it's pointing at it's not actually pointing at anything at this point so when we try to assign values to the members of IP4 uh, we get a crash because there, there, there's no valid pointer at this point. Over here, we correct that example. IP4 is a pointer to gamma, and then we make IP4 equal to the address of IP3. So now IP4 is uh, the pointer to gamma is pointing at IP3. Here we have, uh, we create two pointers uh, uh, to gamma, IP5 and IP6. And then we use dynamic memory allocation. These two examples are equivalent. In each case, we're allocating enough memory for a gamma struct. And in one, we're casting it to a pointer to gamma. And in the other one, we're casting it to a pointer to gamma. So IP5 and IP6 are equivalent. Uh, and then we can actually use the, use the values. A union is a data structure that may hold at different times objects of different types and sizes in the same memory. So the sizes of the largest member. Here's an example where we create a union delta, 
uh, which is uh, tagged delta, and then it has two members. So one is an unsigned integer 32, unsigned 32-bit integer, and then the other is a struct with four unsigned 8-bit integers. And the, so as a result, this union is four bytes in size. And we can access the memory in the union via the A, B, C, D, or we can access the memory in the union via the name IP. So here we create delta, which is a variable of type union delta, and then we assign the memory so that the lowest memory location, which is the first listed, is the, the, the first octet or the first byte is one, and then the other bytes are zero, and then we print out the value of the, un, of the unsigned 32-bit integer. And on my platform, I got one. So here's the memory location, here's the memory layout of the first union. So I've set the first byte to one and then the others to zero. And this is interpreted when we read this as a 32-bit unsigned integer, this is interpreted by, uh, uh, interpreted as one on my platform. Then I turn around and I reverse it. So the first three bytes are now zero and then the fourth byte is one. In that case, the memory layout is laid out like this, 0001. So the largest memory location has the one. And then when I print it out, it has a, a large number, uh, uh, 16 million something, which coincidentally is, is two, to the, uh, uh, two to the 24th power or two. So that is consistent with this being treated as a 32-bit unsigned integer where the the 24th bit is is set to one and everything else is zero so let's talk about ndns ndns is the feature of a microprocessor how it lays out memory for data structures that are larger than one byte and a big ndn microprocessor stores the most significant byte at the smallest memory address which the smallest memory address, we usually show it as left when we're diagramming. The little endian microprocessors store the least significant byte at the smallest memory address. So in this case, we can, uh, we can deduce that our microprocessor is little endian because the one in the leftmost um, memory address, the one in the smallest memory address was the least significant byte. When the one was here, the whole 32-bit unsigned integer had a value of one. And then when the one was over in the, in the other byte, then over in the, uh, the largest memory address, which is three bytes higher, then we ended up with a very large number. So I've run this program on a Intel microprocessor and on an ARM microprocessor, which was running macOS. And in both of those cases, the operating system was little Indian. There are older microprocessors that uh, Motorola microprocessors, PowerPC microprocessors, there's a whole bunch of microprocessors from history that were big Indian. One problem that we're gonna run into later in networking is when we're encoding integers Onto the, and putting them on the network, we need to decide whether to put the most significant byte or the least significant byte at the, the smallest memory address or, or, or transmit it first. And the answer for networking is that whenever you're transmitting integers uh, and encoding them onto the network, they are generally encoded big Indian, which since our microprocessors that we're working with are generally little Indian today because the, the, the x86 processor architecture is dominant in the world today, that is going to cause us some headaches. In any event, back to unions, it's two different ways to access the same underlying memory. And if you're writing fresh code, I don't recommend using unions much, but the problem is there are many network data structures that have unions, so I wanted you to have some experience with them. Here's a union underscore epsilon where I type def it as epsilon. And then I can, now that I have a type, 
I can, I can uh, create it directly and then assign values to it. In this case, I again confirm that we're Lindelendian. I set the smallest memory address to one and the smallest, I set the smallest octet to one. And then when I access it via the unsigned 32-bit integer, it, the value is only one. And then I reverse it so that the largest memory address is, is set. And in that case, when I access it via the unsigned 32-bit integer, I get a large number. Networks have both little endian and big endian systems. Network byte order is how ints are set over the, sent over the internet. And network byte order is big endian. The most significant byte is sent first whenever you send a, a multi-byte integer over the network. Host byte order might be big endian or little endian on your system. And that brings us four functions. We have h to ns, so host to network short, which converts from host byte order to network byte order on your operating system and your microprocessor. And short, that's for 16 bits, host to network long, and network to host short, and network to host long. And actually the number of bits, you know, depends on whether it's short or long on your platform. If your system is big Indian, then these functions do nothing. Some socket related data structures store ints in network byte order, even on a little Indian system. And we are going to run into that. So here's an interesting question. Are decimal integers big Indian or little Indian? Consider the integer one, two, three. Which digit is most significant? Well, that would be the left digit. So we, when we're doing decimal math, we're doing it in a big Indian way because the most significant digit is the one at the uh, to the left, which we which we consider to have the lowest memory address when we're diagramming stuff.